Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. We are back in the studio, back on the road, and we have an action-packed show lined up for you today. And guess what? Today's national day of celebration is, well, actually, I've got a riddle for you. So sometimes I shower those with fame, letting them know that they've won the game, but I can be sharp if held without care. I've daggers hidden almost everywhere. That's my riddle for all of you and for you to guess. Right, anyway, firstly, we look at a new and impressive on a vertical lathe at CMS Sepcor. We get to grips with Fesmac Arnold Fifth Axis Work Holding Solutions from Brown and Holmes on a new DMG Mori 75DM U monoblock, which leads us nicely into this week's cycle time challenge on that same machine. And then finally, we look at a complex turbine blade that is manufactured at ELE on a Eurospark EDM. So now you've got the titles to guess that riddle. So did you get the riddle? No. no. Oh no gosh. <laughs> oh no. So we begin the show. Um, it's 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 National Red Rose Day. Sharp. Oh. You shower someone with them when they're you know oh, on the stage. Right. Right. Yeah. No, you didn't get it. Okay. No. And National Day of Loving. So guess what? Wow. I brought some gifts in for you. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very exciting. Um, so, Gio, because I know you love nuts and you're always oh, really healthy. Thank you. You like, thank you, very much. <laughs> you like your nuts. Um, right. Um, Paul, oh, I know you like your wine, so terrific. I just picked a random bottle of wine up for you. It's not as posh as one of Gio's. Thank you very much. Um, also, Gio, two weeks ago you said you only really like spaghetti when it was cock van day. So I've actually thank got you, you some... <laughs> Some dinner, because it's National Loving Day for you and Nicola, so I've got all the ingredients you. for you. And Joff, who is our director, I've got, yeah, there's your tomatoes. I've got you something, so Joff, you've got to come round. Um, I did try and get you some Monster Munch, Paul, but there wasn't any oh, in the shop, right. so I know like. And I've got you some. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. So, yeah, he's very happy with Bring his Bring that up whiskey, there. So. Um, before I go, i just got to tell you, um, my mate was in a B and Q the other day, and I asked him how big the Q was. He said about the same size as the B. <laughs> Brilliant! It's so a National Day of Loving, National Red Rose Day. So make sure you have some romantic Thank you very much. times this evening. Uh, right? Okay. What have you been up to, Jen? It's been a busy one again, uh, Lindsay. Yeah. We were at uh, NCMT last week. We were at Brown and Holmes last week, and got some of the videos from that. Mm -hmm. um, that we'll be seeing today, but it's, it's been busy. You've been on the road, yeah. The push yeah, stock really campaign. busy. Yeah, the, the push stock campaign. A, a lot of UK suppliers at the moment are trying to support uh, industry by obviously providing great commercial flexibility on some of their machines that they have ex stock. But it's not just machines as well. It's of course, you know, work holding, cutting tools. So the MTD CNC channel at the moment has is awash with great quality uh, products at, at great prices. So and it's, it's a buyer's look. market. So Absolutely. this is what's really exciting. Lots of government schemes, lots of companies doing packages for people. So, you know, we're going to showcase that, aren't we, really? Definitely, yeah. definitely. All right, okay, let's begin with the show. So let's get started uh, with the new Honor Vertical Lathe at CMS Sepcor. Rob, great to be here at CMS uh, Sepcor. I'm looking at these two fabulous Honor vertical lathes from DTS being installed. You've got one already uh, elsewhere in the shop, which you're the operator of. What are they going to be doing, uh, these new ones? Uh, they're going to be machining our mid-range parts for our crushing equipment that we make the spares for. Okay, now interesting, the crushing equipment, what is that, how does it work? Do you, is, it, is it hammering stuff or you're putting stuff in it and it crushes it while it's in it what's the these are the parts of the, the spare parts that go inside the machine uh, the wear parts you know other things like that um, yeah they're gonna, we're going to be machining them and, and that's what you're going to be machining so I'm assuming they're going to be quite large components because they're vertical lathes they're big machines you get the benefit of the swarf fall away you wouldn't do some of this work on a horizontal lathe would you no because it's um, it's too it's too heavy you know so gravity is basically playing a part on a vertical lathe and uh, you know the, the parts obviously a different way up. And so, how heavy would some of the parts be that you'll be putting on these machines? Maximum would say between two, two to three tons to go on these lathes. Okay, and as a as a user of this particular technology, 
Rob, impressed with what Honor do? Because it's not just turning, these machines can mill as well. Yes, they can, yeah. They, we do the drilling as well, the drilling and tapping. So basically we like to put a part on and if we can, we like to complete the part while it's on this machine to save going round the other machines. And it obviously saves time that way. So we complete the part on the machine if possible. Right, so Paul, vertical lathe, uh, tell us the pros. And also I noticed that it's, it's in a pit, isn't it? So what's the reason behind that? I mean, when you see some of the size of the parts that they actually machine at CMS Sepcor, they, they actually work within the, uh, the, the rock crushing sector, so like the mining industry. So some of the, the products that actually do, do the crushing are huge, up to two tonnes in weight, which is, of course, what you can get on a Honor vertical lathe. But you don't want to be doing that horizontally. Can you imagine having a part like that in a, in a chuck, in a horizontal oh, no. lathe? You know, the, it's all kinds of issues that could be encountered. And of course, the swarf fall away, which we always talk about with vertical lathes. And um, the reason it's in that pit, you don't have to put them in a pit, but the, the height of the building when the, the ram goes up uh, actually oh, would collide with okay. a crane. They've got a crane to obviously crane the parts on. So, so who's to... done that? Who has it? Who's so DTS UK that? are the supplier of the whole installation. Um, the civils haven't actually been done by DTS, but they would, of course, work with the company that digs the pit, the foundations. And then those two machines there uh, are going in and, and have been throughout the pandemic. The installation has been going on throughout. So it, it really is a terrific showcase for UK manufacturing, but large industrial engineering. Right, okay, interesting. Geo, anything to add? I just think that, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I uh, can't agree with Paul Moore, actually. I think vertical lathes are a machine that we don't see enough of, really, in the UK, in, in my opinion. And some of the work holding solutions for the vertical lathes are really interesting as well. I used to work and do some applications on vertical lathes. And what we used to find when, we were, when people were using them to do engine rings, for example, is they were using external gripping and then they'd uh, machine the top face and in, in, internal bore. Then they'd have to reset everything up and grip the component internally to machine the uh, external uh, diameter. But there's also now with vertical lathes, as you mentioned, the, the the, the table is facing the spindle, gravity is helping. You can actually have magnetic work holding for, for, um, magne you know, for magnetic materials. So you're pulling the part down and you can do external top and internal features um, all together. That's, so that's something interesting to look, for, yeah, look, look out for. But brilliant machines, great. And of course, great. they're not just turning machines, they're very capable milling machines as well. Right. Oh, okay, right. Okay, we're going to have to move on. So next up, we're going to have a look at a new fifth axis work holding solution that's on a new DMG Mori. Today, I'm looking at maximising efficiency within your machine tools. I'm at Brown & Holmes in Tamworth today, and they've recently invested in the DMG Mori DMU 75 monoblock, one of the most popular selling machines for, from DMG Mori. Now, how do you maximise the efficiencies and, and maximise the envelope in such a machine like this? Well, Brown and Ohms also supply standard work holding products such as the Fresmac Arnold Vice. Now, they're making some of the most complex components that you could possibly imagine and some work holding solutions as well. This particular vice has only got a 125 mil jaw width and a 250 mil stroke. However, they're holding components up to 500 mil in length and even larger. You know, some of the complexity of the components is, is just unbelievable. Um, there's no deflection on the fixed jaw with special cam uh, components inside that pull gives you a pull down force and, com and, the, the, and the materials are no problem either. So this is a real insight on, on how you can really kind of get lots of flexibility, really open up different avenues for the kind of components that you're looking to make. Right, we'll start with Gio, who's the spaghetti lover. Right, Fres MacArnold um, at Brown and Holmes. Can you just explain the setup there? Yep, yeah, so effectively, Lindsay, um, this is an agency that Brown and Holmes are, are, are selling uh, for. Um, so the Fres MacArnold uh, Vice's work holding solutions are part of their standard product portfolio. Yeah. Um, I think that in regards to the actual Fres MacArnold Vice, what I'd like to touch upon, especially with this particular application, what you'll notice here is that the vice is bolted down directly onto the machine bed. In some fifth axis applications, you'll see a riser block underneath the work holding. And this is because 
when you're turning the table at 90 degrees, this is when you're doing uh, most of the fifth axis work. So you need to have clearance um, mm. for the spindle when the, the table's at 90 degrees so you don't collide with the table. And what you get from this, so you've got the vice that's a, a slightly higher, but you've also got extended jaws. It creates that clearance. But by bolting the vice directly to the machine bed, it eliminates vibration. There's no deflection on the fixed jaws. There's no crimping required for holding some of the harder materials in which they're machining there. Um, great product from Brown and Holmes. Anything you want to add there, Paul? Interesting. I, I just like looking at the, the machines when you, I mean, obviously the work holdings kit as part of the process, but uh, they picked a pretty nice machine to actually include it on, haven't you? And obviously to take the video on the uh, the five axis from Mori as they class the five axis champions. Uh, but the vice itself, there is plenty of competition in that market as well though, Gio, isn't it? I mean, is it a pull down vice? Is it got plenty of clamping force? Yeah, those so are that's the thing, Paul. So yeah, it's, it's got pull down. So you've got a cam mechanism that's inside the vice, which gives you pull down force. You've got a, a, um, a clamping force intensifier. So from little or no kind of uh, force. A bit like power steering. Yeah, 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 it's exactly yeah. the same. There's an intensifier that goes through the spindle of the vice to give you maximum clamping force. So holding on minimal excess stock, you can, I mean, the, the, the component that you're going to see next in the cycle time challenge was 500 mil long and you're only holding on 125 mil jaw width. So it really gives you a, an indication of the clamping force, rigidity, you know, and eliminating that vibration is key. And, and when we talk about practicing what you preach, that's exactly what they're doing there at Brown and Holmes. They're using their own work holding solutions to produce yeah. bespoke work holding products. Right. And Gio, if you want to look down that camera, what we're going to see next? A cycle time challenge. <laughs> Today I'm here at Brown and Holmes in Tamworth. Now I've got the opportunity to give you a cycle time challenge on their new investment, a DMG Mori DMU 75 monoblock. Now this part is a work holding part and Brown and Holmes make a lot of work holding solutions. It's an aluminium part. Eight tools have been used on this part as I understand and at 16,000 RPM. How long do you think this part took to machine on this DMG Mori? Um, right, so this week I've never seen Mark with so much hair. And no. a tan. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, weather's obviously good then in France, isn't it, for him? He's out on the bike up and down those hills. Yeah. He came off his bike the other day as well. He did, he went yeah, over, over the, the top, top of yeah. a car. Yeah, yeah. But he's okay, he's okay, everyone, before you start worrying. He's he was trying to go over the top of the car. <laughs> 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 oh. Right, your guess. I, I think there's. It, I, Depends on the, the stock that it's coming out of, but I would say on that machine, something like that, I, 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 just less than an hour, maybe 50 minutes. 50 minutes, yeah. that's yours. Yeah. You were on site, so mm, you know. know. Yeah. Uh, but this is your chance to get involved. This is what Swarf and Chips is all about, is, is your involvement. So put your guess of this week's Cycle Time Challenge in the comments box below, and you can be a winner of the amazing Swarf and Chips goodie bag. So <laughs> Uh, right, finally, we're going to take a look at this very impressive turbine blade made on an EDM at ELE. David, can you explain what you're doing here um, at ELE Advanced Technologies on these Joe Mars machines from Eurospark? So these machines that uh, we have in front of us now, they are used for uh, EDM in quite complex shapes in, in turbine blades and turbine vase that are used in the larger end of the industrial gas turbine market. Uh, because we manufacture all our uh, graphite electrodes on site, it has allowed us to become more creative in the type of shapes of geometry that we do. So what would traditionally have been a, a five or six operation process is now being machined in one setup using complex uh, graphite electrodes. So the, the, the roughing operation, the finishing operation, takes, us, takes the uh, geometry down to plus or minus 100 microns using EDM technology. So what's the reason that you would use this process to make the parts as opposed to machining? Is it just because there are areas you can't get to with a, a, a traditional uh, you know, machining method? Um, for example, the profiles, the square edges. It, are those the elements that you need to produce like what you've got here, a graphite insert? Yeah, so, so traditionally, the, the, if we were to do this using grinding or milling, it would be a number of setups uh, and it would be very difficult to machine due to the, some of the, the small cavities and the so, small slots in here. But the, the uh, EDM method allows us to get these uh, tight control features a, a lot more uh, a lot quickly 
Fantastic machine. He's, he's very pleased. It's obviously opened up capabilities, but he's also talking about setups and seeing it from a business perspective too, isn't he? Which is Yeah, the EDM technology is something we, we do talk about a lot, and it's great to see really good examples of where that discipline fits over above normal machining. Three machines they purchased there. What we didn't see on this video as well is I actually saw some of the blades that um, they were doing EDM drilling on as well. Very, very small diameter holes for the, for the cooling of the blades at the back of the engine. All these things that go into the aerospace, you know, creation of the engines are, are fascinating. And, and of course, the, the standards involved in how the quality processes and the procedures that companies like this can actually uh, adhere to in order to yeah. supply, you know, tier one um, manufacturers. Not just these machines, they've bought Kitamura's new recently. Really good example of someone investing their way out of uh, the circumstances we've been in. Yeah, in, you know, yeah. well, he was saying lately. reducing set up times and everything. You know, it's all money, isn't it? So, mm. Gio, anything you want to yeah, add? Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, echoing what Paul says, really, but also, you know, He's bought other machines, new machines. It's not just an EDM shop. So the fact that he's not doing them on a, a milling machine really uh, highlights the fact that there's such a necessity for EDM technology. He's now manufacturing his own electrodes to get some of them special profiles, etc. You mentioned reducing operations. If it was to mill them, he'd have to do them in a lot of operations. Mm. And some companies that are doing components like that are having to sub them out, yeah. you know, to get yeah. them done. So he's got he's got all that in-house capability and and i think that they lend themselves and they should be in a lot more shops what i would finally say uh, yeah. is great to great to visit here just shows at the moment that we you know we're not finding it difficult at all to get into these companies yeah. and bring you these stories which mm -hmm. a, a, a month or so ago we were a little bit concerned whether they'd be happy to you know accommodate our filming requirements but we're not finding a problem getting in anywhere which is mm -hmm. really superb so if you've got a good story you want us to visit site we do it safely yeah. um, and i know salesmen at the moment are really struggling to get in places but it doesn't seem to be the case with us so it's well, yeah news. yeah no that that's brilliant and of course we've got the push stock campaign and you know i know we were talking because we've been on the road recently it is a buyer's market out there. So if you are confident, you can get some brilliant deals. I know like ETG are doing something like £40,000 off and you get a free machine if you purchase a machine and stuff. There's all sorts going on, so it's quite, quite exciting. Very. Got the podcast and everything at the moment, haven't we? Yeah, podcasts are going really well. People are biting at the bit to, to be on one. And we're also going to be going out to end users and doing a lot more podcasts from, from the end users. Really real life, yeah. So I mean, Brown and Holmes, the push stock campaign, from Brown and Holmes, the, the, the Thresmac Arnold voice that we've seen in today's Swarf and Chips. You'll be, be able to w watch that video on the, on, on the website. And um, it's all good to some really po positive stories. There's a common theme from today's Swarf, is, and that's new machinery. Yep. You know, the new DMG, the new Kitamoras, the new vertical lathes. The, there's still people investing. I think that's something that we need to really yeah. kind of highlight. Yeah, it's all a bit doom and gloom. And actually, sometimes, in some cases, it isn't. But, right, okay, thank well, you so much nice for watching. To you're going to have yeah. your Thanks red wine. Uh, you're going to make some fabulous food for Nicola tonight. He's going to um, enjoy a couple of whiskeys. <laughs> no, and it's um, where it's are my Friday. red roses? You know. Red Gio, rose. you, got, you didn't you I'm buy them? I'm so sorry, oh. I'm sorry. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Anyway, keep those spindles <laughs> turning. <laughs>